All right, Capricorn, this is going to be your October 2020 reading. So most people go for their Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, occasionally Mars for Capricorn. If you do not know your birth chart perfectly fine, you're more than welcome to just, base, just go based off of Capricorn for whether you fall onto that placement in the uh, calendar. Perfectly fine. So what I have is some Oracle cards under here with the Halloween Oracle. Then we have some Tarot cards with the Edgar Allan Poe Tarot going to be drawing clarification cards for tarot as well with the miniature Halloween tarot. Going to throw in some uh, playing cards with Beetlejuice just to shake things up a little bit, a little bit differently from what I've been doing. Tarot is actually how I learned, or playing cards, how I learned to read tarot in the first place. Going to get some extra tarot cards without it actually being tarot. And then going to draw from my uh, Oracle deck as well. Going to throw in some numbers and letters with my dice as usual. All right, Capricorn, let's see what's for your October. All right, Capricorn, so as usual, we're starting with your tarot. Until just now, Pisces was the one who had the most cards. Officially, Capricorn takes the lead. <laughs> uh, usually, I only draw about three tarot cards. Y'all ended up with five, because four fell out at the same time. So the first card that we have is the Five of Cups. This usually talks about a, a sadness of some sort, um, you know, the cups that are spilt in the background. But then you're trying to focus on the Two of Cups right now, so there could have been a partnership that you're a little bit sad over. Um, but definitely the Five of Cups is talking about a little emotional instability that's kind of making you feel like things aren't the greatest right now. Next we have the World card. World card definitely talks about, you know, there is a balance to be had. Everything that you have wanted is either going to be coming your way or... Everything that you've had might have kind of been broken up a little bit as well. Just depends on how that fits your situation. The next we have is the Hermit card. Hermit talks about needing to go inside of yourself, kind of spend some alone time a little bit. So this could definitely be for some of you that have been, um, if you're very social and you feel like you're a little drained, maybe that's why the Five of Cups came up for you. You feel a little emotionally drained then maybe you need to spend some time by yourself in order to kind of regain a little bit more of yourself in order to bring balance back to your world as well. Next, we have the Ace of Cups. So I'm really feeling that this is um, more of a needing to self-reflect, basically. There's some things that you need to self-reflect on. The Aces are all about starting brand new, starting over. So with the Cups, of course, it stands for emotions and your... Um, kind of pulling on your heartstrings, tucking on your heartstrings a little bit. So I feel like with this, for some of you, it's definitely going to be something along the lines of needing to kind of fill your cup differently than you were before. And then the last card we have is the Judgment card. Judgment talks about being reborn. It talks about a new perspective on things in order to kind of lift yourself up in into I, I heard different dimension so for some of you oh a spiritual awakening for some of you of course this is collective so it's not going to resonate for everybody but i feel like for some of you you're going through a bit of a rough patch right now and then this going inward and refilling your cup and being reborn I feel like that's what it is for a lot of you is that this is quite the spiritual awakening and I feel like for most of you it's going to be kind of a heavy October for y'all but you're definitely going to be kind of realizing some things about yourself and your life that's going to give you a happier perspective in the end. So the first one we have is joy. It says rejoicing in the present. So with this, obviously, you know, she's surrounded by golden light and everything like that. And of course, all of the oak leaves. So I feel like with this, definitely going to be, um, you know, kind of needing to draw inward a little bit in order to rejoice in that present moment in everything that you have going for you. Scoop that up a little bit. Gonna have to change out my layout because there's so many cards. The next one we have is Skull of Light. I love this card, Illumination. So this is talking about, you know, good. this is kind of a spiritual awakening card, really. So this is very much, you know, 
the light behind you is going to help guide you. The universe has got your back pretty much is another way of looking at this card as well. Let's scooch in with my cards here. The next one is Apple. Risk and reward. So, of course, this could be taken as a bleeding heart moment a little bit, but also very much so talking about all of the things that you have within your life is a give and take. There is a balance. There are risks that you have taken. There are also rewards that you have been given and earned in that process. So maybe that's what that is. And of course, spiritual awakenings feel like that anyways. If you've ever gone through one before, they suck. <laughs> they are very heavy. They're very intense. You go through a very, um, it's almost depression kind of, and you kind of get hit in the face with a lot of um, realizations about yourself and about the world. And then you wake up and you're like, cool, I can never see anything the same ever again. Kind of opens your eyes and you're not able to close them again, kind of. So it's definitely like a, a give and take. There is a reward. But I feel like a lot of this is very much like being reborn. There's a lot of things that you're going through right now that kind of feels like it's not the greatest. You know, you have that sad moment that's going on. But I feel like most of it for you, Capricorn, is definitely going to be... October is, like I said, going to be a little bit of a heavy month for y'all. But you're definitely going to be much happier in the long run. You're definitely going to have that rebirth moment. And you're definitely going to be a lot more... Uh, stable, I do hope. That's something I just heard. So I'm going to draw some clarification cards and see what we can get as I just drop one. Didn't even ask a question, so I'm just going to pop that right back in the deck. So why is the Five of Cups here for Capricorn? I try to shuffle on camera, but also at the same point in time, I try not to do it because it's kind of an, like in the way a little... So why is this Five of Cups here? Anything at all? As I almost dropped the entire deck. Why is this Five of Cups here? Ooh. So we have the full card. So the full talks about needing to kind of take a leap of faith, kind of have a little bit of a childish moment, kind of play around a little bit. So maybe that's what that is with the Five, is talking about... You know, things that you have is going to be taking that leap of faith. And a lot of times, that's a lot of what, you know, being sad is in order to get better and kind of refill your cup and kind of go within yourself and kind of um, change your perspective a little bit. The full card definitely talks about, you know, taking that leap of faith. And maybe sometimes in order to get better, you need to take a leap of faith whether that's emotional or otherwise. Do you want to get one more? So why is this Five of Cups here? So we have the Queen of Cups or Queen of Ghosts. So the Queen of Cups is talking about someone who is emotionally balanced, who is um, able to understand the nurturing aspect of things. So this could be... Um, you know, someone in your life who's trying to help you and trying to nurture you. Or maybe that's yourself. Maybe you need to be the queen, you know, and of course gender is fluid, so, um, you know, uh, energy is fluid, so uh, feel free to kind of tweak that to a king if you feel like you need to, that's perfectly fine. But I feel like with the Queen of, of Cups, on top of the Five of Cups, I feel like you are needing to... Um, become that emotionally stable or kind of search for that emotional stability whether that's with a friend or kind of dig down deep into yourself with that hermit and kind of draw in yourself a little bit and um you know pull out that strength in order to see the world with new eyes and to refill your cup a little bit already or to start refilling your cup even ways so, okay, I was thinking, why is the world card here, but I didn't am able to ask it out loud yet, but we got the chariot. The chariot talks about everything moving forward. Usually this is depicted with horses, for this is depicted with a hearse, <laughs> obviously, Halloween. So this is talking about obviously moving forward. 
So with the world, I feel like that's very fitting. It's talking about moving forward with things and, you know, whatever heartache it is, whatever moments that you had that you're going through, it's going to change your perspective with a leap of faith a little bit in order to move things forward because you need to move forward. You cannot dwell on the past. And then we have the Seven of Pumpkins, which of course talks about a, um, how do I say this? Seven of Pumpkins on top of the world card talks about all of the things that you're working for, the things that you're nurturing, and you're able to actually see it for what it is. You're able to kind of observe everything and be proud, but you're also needing to be patient. Not everything is going to change overnight. Your world is not going to magically fix itself overnight, although sometimes that would be very nice. But there are things that are going to happen that's going to take a little bit of time. You just have to be patient and nurture the things around you and kind of be this patient farmer and watch things grow because it will be something to be proud of. You will be something to be proud of. You will be able to be proud of yourself, potentially more proud than you have been already or in the past because of the things you've overcome. Alrighty, so why is this hermit card here? two cards that flipped out again so we have the six of pumpkins so the six of pumpkins is talking about a give and take so there's a balance to be had and a lot of times especially with the hermit hermit talks about going within yourself in order to refine that balance refine that balance as well so i feel like with that one that is definitely talking about everything that is going on for you personally there is a give and take you know, the things that you are putting out into the universe is going to come back to you. You know, the the um, manifestations that you've been putting out there, they will come back to you. But also whatever you put out into the universe, it is going to come back to you, of course. So um, everything that you're thinking about is going to balance out. It really does. Things do balance out. They find a way of balancing out. It just takes a little bit of time sometimes. And sometimes you have to be a little bit more patient. A lot of times more patient than we actually want, right? And then we have the Hierophant. Now, the Hierophant does represent uh, tradition, stability. Um, so a lot of times, too, going within yourself, that could be going within yourself. I feel just, like I said, there's so much spiritual awakening, spiritual path, pathfinding, finding yourself so much strongly within this energy of the card, cards right now. So I feel like for that, especially because you did get the Hierophant, that I feel like it's very much finding yourself and going within yourself going within in order to find that stability, to find that balance, and find your path. That's very much what I keep hearing. Spiritual awakening and finding yourself. Very, very, very much so is what I keep hearing as well. Oops. Try not to drop the entire deck, shall we? Why is it Ace of Cups here? Why is this Ace of Cups here for Capricorn? I feel like I'm going to drop the deck. It's very strange. Why is the Ace of Cups here? That one didn't want to go in. So we have the Knight of Ghosts or the Knight of Cups. So with the Knight of Cups coming in, I really feel like since it's clarifying the Ace of Cups, um, I feel like it's very much talking about, you know, finding a new way to, um, you know, fill your cup, starting anew. And then here's the Knight. So the Knight of Cups does not move super fast, but he does move with love. He moves with intention. He moves... Um, kind of headstrong steadily all the knights move forward they are not focused on moving backwards they're not focused on stopping so i feel like since it's clarifying the ace of cups for you i feel like it's very much discussing or clarifying rather that you need to focus on moving forward and learn how to refill your cup so why is the ace of cups here get one more card why is Ace of Cups here? Oop. Sometimes they flip and I'm trying to not drop them. 
Okay, so then we got the Five of Cups, the Five of Ghosts. So the Five of Ghosts, but it's upside down. Which I actually really love that this is coming up for you at the end-ish of the reading, because you started feeling so insecure. There was moments in your life that you were very nervous and anxious and upset about. And you're just having to, there's this progression that eventually leads to this being inverted because you have found a way to, you know, refill your cup and look at things from a different perspective. You took a leap of faith with the fool, went within yourself with the hermit to find yourself, and you've managed to invert that. You've managed to flip the five of ghosts upside down to where there is no longer sadness in order to hit that rebirth moment. I absolutely love that. That does not happen very often in readings, or at least for me personally. So the fact that you did get that, I'm really stoked about. Now I'm very curious. So why is the judgment card here? Why is the judgment card here for Capricorn for their October? Why is the judgment card here? Ah, okay. So it flipped out, but I'm trying not to drop it. So the nine of ghosts, also the nine of cups. So the Nine of Cups is talking about you're almost there. You know, the, the Ten of Cups is considered the happy ending card, the fairy tale ending card. So with the Nine, you're almost there. There's so much to be happy about. You have all of these people supporting you. It is great. Even the little black cat is super stoked, just sitting there nice and content. There's so much good about everything in your life by the end of this moment. So potentially by the end of the month even. There's going to be so much that you are excited about that this rebirth moment for you is going to lead you, hopefully, to that happy ending moment or to lead you even closer to that happy ending moment. Let me get one more, hopefully, at least. Why is this judgment card here? Why is this judgment card here? You don't want to go back in? And then we have the Two of Ghosts, Two of Cups. So with the Two of Cups, you have so much emotion. My goodness, Capricorn. Capricorns are not usually the emotional type, so sorry, y'all. <laughs> but with the Two of Cups, it is talking about a union. Since this is so much about you and emotionally stabilizing yourself, I feel like that is predominantly a relationship with yourself you know, your your mind and your body or however it is you want to go with that in order to find your rebirth moment with that. So there's a lot of um, coming together with yourself and building that relationship with yourself, a partnership or a, a stabilization with yourself in order for that rebirth moment to hit. I'm curious what's under here. So you have the Four of Bats. The Four of Bats is the Four of Swords card and that talks about... Um, needing to be uh, in a moment of rest because there's a lot going on in your life that you're going to have to prepare for. And I feel like that's going to be a big prepared moment for you in October, my dear Capricorns. I'm sorry that this is a bit of a heavy month for you. It potentially could be a bit of a heavy month for you, but I feel like there's a lot of things that probably you feel like things aren't going your way right now, but then like hopefully by the end of the month of October, you're going to have that you know, moment of rebirth and things are going to be so much closer to being happier for you, so much closer to that happy ending. So I'm going to be drawing um, at least two of my oracle cards from my uh, peculiar fragments. Try not to knock that off the table here. Oracle. So we're going to see what kind of messages we can get for Capricorn for their October 2020. What can we get for Capricorn for October 2020? Whoop. I just fling that one across the room. Keep wanting to jump out. So we have the old key. It says, the key to success and power is in your own hands, or in your hands. Unlock the knowledge to your potential. Very much so. Go within yourself. Be the hermit. It's okay. <laughs> Go within yourself in order to find the key to your success. Get one more. At least... What can we get for Capricorn for their October? Oh, my goodness. Ooh, I love this card. So we have the portal. 
says, living between the worlds, you are called to trust the universe and walk through a portal to discover your own intuitive abilities. Yeah, I feel like this is a spiritual awakening for y'all, which, like I said, they don't feel great. But afterwards, you do feel good. You, you do feel good after the fact. It just kind of sucks a little bit because it the, the start of a spiritual awakening is just nobody's favorite ever, pretty much. Because, like I said, you just hit this moment where you're like, everything sucks right now. And then by the time you're reborn, you wake up. You're not able to close your third eye again, pretty much. But I really feel like this is a spiritual awakening for you guys. I know I've said that 20 times, I'm sorry. So we're gonna get some advice from Almighty Beetlejuice. <laughs> gonna see what kind of uh, tarot advice we can get without it being an actual tarot card. And kind of break things up a little bit. Okay, that one fell. Did we get two? Oh, and draw two. Perfect. Okay, so we have the Two of Hearts, which is the Two of Cups. What did I tell you? You got the Two of Cups, which is absolutely fantastic. And then you have the Ace of Cup, or excuse me, the Ace of Diamonds, which is the Ace of Pentacles, which is talking about just starting something, you know, planting those seeds and watching it grow, being patient about everything. So you do have so much going on for you in October. Very, very nice. This is a good reading. It really, really is. It's going to be a little heavy, potentially at the very beginning of October, but by the end of it, you're going to be a lot happier, I do hope. I really, really think that you will be, though. All right, Capricorn. Going to get some uh, letters for you. Could draw out names, anything like that, but we're going to see what we can grab for your October. You want to come out? All right. All right, we have A, we got two E's. That's sideways. J and an L. So of course, right off the bat, I do see AJ, which could be someone's initials, of course. I do see Eel, which is interesting. <laughs> I don't know if Eel is gonna stand for anything. Although it is kind of cute because it is sitting on top of uh, when Beetlejuice turns into a uh, little worm, so. That could mean almost anything. It could also spell out someone else's initials as well. I'm not seeing too terribly much with that, but we're going to see what we can get with your dice. I keep dropping these things. My goodness. All right, so with the white dice, is going to be a significant date. It could be an age, anything like that. Something that could be your favorite day of the month or anything like that. But we're going to see what's going to be coming up for you on the more positive notes for your October Capricorn. We got three, we got a four, and we got a six. Very interesting. So I feel like the third could be significant for you. So of course that does add up to uh, being uh, October 3rd, or it could be 13. Depends on if the number 13 is uh, a good or bad number for you, but could be something significant for you as well. Maybe by the 13th could be your birthday or anything like that and see what's gonna be significant for you. So then the black dice are gonna be something significant, but gonna shake your life up in a way that you need to be shaken up. Probably not gonna be your favorite day in the month, but it's gonna be something that's gonna need to happen for you specifically. We're gonna see what's gonna be coming for Capricorn's October. Three, three, and six. Okay. So I have the feeling threes are going to be intense for you. Interesting. I'm very curious, because of course that is um, 12 as well. So 12th and 13th potentially could be pretty significant for you. Uh, times of the month for you in October, that might be pretty intense. You know, could be something, maybe that's when you start to kind of hit that rebirth moment where you're like, crap, this sucks, but also at the same point in time, this is exciting. So, yeah, yeah I mean, you know, could be a little intense for you. <laughs> All right, so we're going to see what y'all got for love. It's going to be anything for October for Capricorn's love life. 
definitely going to be seeing what y'all have for that. Give it a little bit more of a happy ending. Happy moment. I've rolled people's anniversaries before too, so I absolutely love that. One, two, six. Okay, so obviously that adds up to three again with six. You have six in all of them. And you did get um, the... Oh my gosh, you, you got the seven of pumpkins, of course. So I'm feeling like for that, you know, things are progressing for you in that way. You know, you start with that balance, you have that balance moment within your life, and then you're able to hit this moment of growth and patience in order to get to the end. So I want to see what lucky number we can roll for y'all Capricorn for October. Could be an actual lucky number or anything like that. Could be something significant and it might not be significant for you at all. Could be for someone else. But we're going to see what we can get for your lucky number for October. We got a five. Okay. So like I said, you got the five of cups both. Like you get, you got them twice. You got it um, ups, or, or upright for the start of it. And then at the end of it, pretty much you have it inverted. Which typically, of course, like I said, means that you were able to find something within yourself to turn things around. So that is fantastic. I do love that. I'm very, very, very excited. Like I said, you have the, the Four of Swords under here talking about a rest period. So definitely take some time to rest and recharge, but know that there are things in your life that are happening and you are being shown the way. The universe is trying to give you hints and signs. You just have to look for them and listen to them. Sometimes they're a little harder to find, but I definitely feel like you're going to be able to hit that moment by the end of the month. Hopefully, I do hope. I feel like 27th, 28th, like a few days before the end of the month, you're probably going to feel hopefully a lot better about things. All right, Capricorn, that's what I have for your October of 2020. So until next time, lol, you'll... Bleh. Why can I not talk? Until next time, y'all, know yourself and know your power.